Randy Robinson of Life Today TV. I'm here with Aaron Bethay, who is an uh, actor star of Fireproof and uh, the new movie, The Redemption, Redemption of Henry Myers, as well as an upcoming animated feature. So, Aaron, good to have you. Good to talk to you. Thank you. you know, I feel like I know you after watching you on Fireproof. <laughs> I'm so much nicer How in real that, life. That was like a big step, though, for you, right? It was that, huge. Yeah. yeah, it was a huge step. I mean, b before that, the only film that I had done was Facing the Giants. And, uh, and facing the giants, you, you blink, you miss me. Oh, so yeah. to go from that to, okay, you're now you're gonna. Yes, I was a reporter, yeah. right at the beginning of the movie. I was Alicia Houston. <laughs> and, um, but you know, to go from that to, okay, now you're gonna be the lead. Oh, and Kirk Cameron's gonna play your husband. Oh, and it's gonna, it's opening at number four in the nation. Yeah. And it's the number one yeah. <laughs> independent yeah, film of one. the year. It was yeah. a little, ah, but um, I'm, so now I'm like, you know, every movie I make, I'm like, well, they all do this, right? They all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's really spoiled you quick. It did. Now, before that, you were doing a lot of Disney stuff down in Orlando, yeah? I was. I was, and, and even after that, even right after Fireproof, I went back down and worked at Disney for How another was that? couple of it's, years. It's, it's a wonderful place down there. Isn't it? it was amazing, and I, you know, I always say that I love doing film work, and I, I don't ever want to do anything else, but. No matter what job I do or what role I have from this day forward, there will never be another job that was just as much pure fun yep. as that one was working Surely for there's Disney. there's a dark side so of Disney fun. you can tell us. About. Well, you know, there's a couple. I mean, it's <laughs> gosh, it's hot, and you're in you know layers and layers. You know, everybody always says, "Well, do they make those?" You know, all the costumes, everything you wear, they make it so you can breathe. I'm like, no, no, no. They make it so thick that it won't show no matter how bad you sweat. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, like, I bet they stink like yeah, nobody's business. Like, hockey so, gear inside yeah, there. I got really lucky, though. I, you know, I, I had to do a few years in one of those, not even a few years, a few months in, uh, in one of those miserable costumes. But, um, <laughs> but then I, I, got, I got bumped up and I ended up, I did a show there um, for several years as Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, and nice. uh, did a little show right right in the shadow of Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom called Storytime with Belle. So it was great. I got to, you know, I was playing Belle and kids just, they love their Disney princesses. Yeah, and yeah. it was just so much fun. I miss it. Jump up to Fireproof again. Um, I've interviewed Kirk. Oh, have you? You're taller than he is. <laughs> I am. In my bare feet, I'm not taller than he is. <laughs> so were you did the, the whole but shoot bare Pretty bare much in my bare feet and, and in very flat shoes. And he, it's, you I were keep, in some cowboy boots or something? Yeah, there, exactly. Something? I always joke about I keep getting cast with these, you know, these guys who are like my, my exact height, which is a common thing in Hollywood. It's a bizarre thing yeah, where like leading ladies are pretty tall. You've got yeah. Charlize Theron and Nicole Kidman and Angelina Jolie that are all very tall. And then you've got Tom Cruise, who's like 5'6", and you know, Sylvester Stallone, who's like 5'7", yeah. you know, yeah. it's like very short leading men. And um, so I keep joking because I have Kirk Cameron, and then I, I worked with, uh, I played Sean Astin's wife in a film also, so I'm like, well, now I'm the wife of a hobbit, you know? <laughs> but, uh, and he's about my same height too, but they're, they're such wonderful guys that yeah. it's, you can't complain. And, Good. Uh, in the redemption of Henry Myers, my co-star is finally taller than I am. Yeah. He's like six foot two. Yeah. So, yay! There you go. <laughs> We're there doing go. good. Uh, well, I heard a rumor that um, the scene where the two reconcile, you know, the husband and wife that you and Kirk played, uh -huh. they kiss at the end of the movie. Yeah. That wasn't you. No. Was he so repulsed by you that he just refused <laughs> to do it contractually? Or what? You know, that's what's funny <laughs> is in so many interviews when Fireproof came out, um, that's the wording people would use. People would say, so I hear Kirk Cameron refused to kiss you. And I'm like, well, hold on. It wasn't personal. <laughs> so I'm like, no, he has a policy. He has a policy. He has a wife for crying so out loud. He's got a wife. He's got a policy. And he and his wife have an agreement that he doesn't kiss other actresses. It wasn't me. It wasn't like her. No. <laughs> no, that's funny. That's so funny. I know. It was funny. They told me about his his policy and of course I was of course you know I totally understood and I was on board with it and it fits with the message of the film anyway are you kidding right trying right. to honor marriages here yeah, here's a movie so, on fidelity watch these two absolutely. unmarried married people kiss, kiss each, each other, other. right yeah. so it was funny though because we uh when the director told me about it he sat me down to tell me about it like he was telling me my grandmother died <laughs> or something and I was like I'm really not that upset about not kissing Kirk Cameron but I did tell I said you know if you if it was one of the guys from like Saved by the Bell that I had a crush on when I was a kid I might be upset with you right now <laughs> Oh, well, well you, 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 you take what you can get, right? That's right. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, Redemption Henry Myers. Yes. 
Period piece. How, you know, fun Period deal. piece. Oh, so much fun. I mean, I, I keep telling everybody this is, it is my favorite movie I've done to date. I love it. You, uh, it's a tougher character in this one. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to spoil the movie for anybody, <laughs> but, um, there's issues of forgiveness mm -hmm. that are that are central. Yep, um, absolutely. But yet, your character, you know, was pretty consistent in in message. You know, yeah. What, what's kind of the? How did you approach that? What did, what did you? Cause, cause, okay, let me put it this way: If <laughs> I'd have been your character, I'd have been like, "Ain't no way I'd have acted like that." I'd have been <laughs> guns blazing, you know. Right? Yeah. Right? How did you well, I think, you know, for, for Marilyn, for my character, I had to think a lot about um, what the time period was. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Marilyn, uh, it, she's not Annie Oakley. You know, she's, uh, she's very soft and she's very feminine and, um, and she's re she really is a virtuous woman and she's a woman of God. And, but then because of this tragedy that has befallen her where she's the untimely loss of her husband, um, she's also had to become a bit tougher. Yeah. Um, and she's a, she's very much a steel magnolia, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and she's had to sort of harden herself to survive mm -hmm. in the Old West. That was a tough time for a sure. woman alone sure. um, to be on a ranch and raise two children. And so I think it's that, it's the mixture of the two. It's the fact that she is tough and she has, she has grown this strength in the time that she's been missing her husband um, that allows her uh, to maybe endure things that she wouldn't have been able to endure before. Yeah. And at the same time, she's maintained her, her virtue and her softness and her faith in God. Mm -hmm. And that's what's gotten her through it. And I think that's what allows her um, to, to uh, adapt despite the circumstances mm -hmm. and to be able to forgive ultimately. And, yeah. and she, you know, she's got her moments mm -hmm. where she's, uh, she's pretty tough and she's pretty hurt. Mm -hmm. Or maybe but. she doesn't forgive. You'll have to watch to find <laughs> out. Right, right. Maybe there are some things she just can't forgive. You know, you, you did get up stage in that movie quite a bit. Oh, my daughter. She's the cutest thing, man. Right. What a, what a great casting job, right? She's amazing. I, I keep telling the, the uh, producers, I'm like, all right, for the next movie, nobody cuter than me on screen. <laughs> <laughs> this is so wrong. No, Jaden Roberts, she, pl she plays my daughter Laura in the film, and she's just, she's one of those child actors that's just magical. Yeah, she really she, is. She is. She's amazing yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and so much fun to work with. From a personal standpoint, what is film just something, I mean, anybody who wants to act would jump at great opportunities <laughs> and you've had you're getting some good opportunities really yeah um is there more to it than that mm, you mean uh, as far as how to get into it or no i mean you're doing christian films yeah I, I, is the message I, I, are they just easier to get into as an actress or is <laughs> the message what um you know is there some more meaning there other than a good acting gig yeah well i mean for me it um i it's funny because I always said I I, ne I always used to say I never wanted to do Christian film. It's because they and were not that, very good. That's right, exactly. And I'm a believer, and so I have a reason to do Christian film, and I never wanted to because I just thought they're horrible, they were. and they do nothing really. They were more of a hindrance to the gospel yeah, <laughs> than they were sure. an aid, sure. you know, or a tool for the gospel. And um, you know, it's. Uh, People were always shocked when I would say that in Fireproof interview. He never wanted to do it. How'd you end up doing Fireproof? Because Fireproof has merit. I saw that there was merit to it. It wasn't another, there was, it was a tool. It was going to be used. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what I want for, for any of the films that I do though. And that's sort of my criteria is Christian or non-Christian. Um, is it a tool that can be used to contribute something positive mm -hmm. to society? Because Lord knows, God knows that we have uh, enough negative stuff in the world and enough bad things going on in the world and here he's provided this open door for us to to contribute in the form of media and entertainment and something that we love something that is better yeah. and an alternative it's something people will listen to absolutely well. absolutely and people do i mean media that's why um that's why the the kindred brothers and sherwood pictures began as they they read an article that said that people are more influenced by things that they see in movies or hear on television than anything they hear from the pulpit in a church 
And so what an incredible opportunity to either spread the gospel or to just offer something better in general in a form of entertainment sure. that's not trashy and doesn't have any objectionable content and is just uplifting and good work and you know a true story like the blind side or something you know yeah, i mean sure. just good sure. good uh good media yeah yeah and when yeah. it's done well it's even better it doesn't embarrass us <laughs> absolutely absolutely last thing mention your little japanese animation thing <gasps> yes so i have a, a new children's series um that is called yesado which in japanese means the way of jesus and it's an animated series, and I am the voice of one of the characters in it. It's, uh, it's all New Testament stories, which is really exciting because there haven't really been a kid series that's really only New Testament. I mean, Veggie Tales and things like that tend to do a lot of Old Testament. So, yes, yeah. yeah, so it's a beautiful HD CGI animation, and I think the name really just comes from um, they wanted to name the title character who is sort of a. He, the the characters in the film are all birds and oh. they're all uh, indigenous to the land of israel and the holy land and the lead character yesido is a dove um, and they wanted to be able to equate him a little bit to jesus and make him relevant to jesus sort of like if there was a messiah for the bird world <laughs> um and so uh, allegories that's right Parables, that's right, right. Yep. so he it's a modern it's a bird parable nice. and uh so they named him yesido which means the way of jesus and made yep. him a dove and i think they you know they wanted a name for him that wasn't spot on they weren't calling him jesus because right. he is not jesus right there's a um, jesus type right so they know. couldn't call him like jesus they couldn't call him like yeshua or <laughs> right. anything like that yeah, yeah. 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 So they wanted something that that sounds like it and relates to it, but we're calling he's the way of Jesus. He's pointing people to the Very teachings cool. of Jesus. Very cool. And you're so. a voice of a bird. I'm the voice of a bird. Well, congratulations. I'm, you have arrived. I'm, uh, I'm Maggie, who is uh, she's a, a Palestinian sunbird. She's kind of like a hummingbird. And she's sort of representative of Mary Magdalene. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. a cute series, really cute. I'm excited about it. Well, I appreciate it. If anybody wants to follow you, can they jump online? Absolutely, they can jump online. I'm on Facebook, Aaron Buffet, and Twitter, at Aaron Buffet. It's pretty easy. It's all Aaron Buffet. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Check it out, and be sure, if you haven't already, check out The Redemption of Henry Myers. Good film, and she does a great job in Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sitting with us. Absolutely. It was fun.